Hello, hello, hello. I've got a little bit of time before I'm teaching a lesson to the wonderful Air Cadet. So I thought we'd uh, just do a wee couple of circuits here at East Mids. And this is the GA ramp according to FSX. Yeah, well played FSX. Right, well, we'll hit that problem when we come to it. Um, chase plane looks like it's cracked itself, so let's just set that. Uno momento, por favor. Um, yeah, Bubba Instructor. And then let's sign a button on the clicker -a thing. Tick. There we go. So if I look away, press the button, fan dabby dozy. Um, yes, I've just uh, logged on to VATSIM as well, although we've got no controller on. Uh, and do we have any traffic? No, we have no traffic at East Mids either. So that is very good news. Good news, everyone. So we shall, before I forget, let's squawk mode Charlie fantastic we'll stick on some parking brakes yeah this is going to be yeah, just me sort of mucking about doing some circuits and whatnot uh sort of talking through it for anyone who's uh, interested in that sort of thing and um yeah uh battery can go on that can go on magnetos can go on avionics can go on and we can stick why won't that go down? Okay, apparently this one doesn't have a red beacon. Um, so we'll be on Unicom Madness. Not that it's going to make a jot of difference. So 1228. Uh, so that's on VAR. Uh, we'll squawk 7000 for uh, VFR. And we're on the ground at the moment. Um, and we shall, brakes are on. Okay, mixture. Wrong one. Mixture can go to a ridge. We can stick the fuel in the pump on. And we can press. Well, we can do clear prop. Right, that's a bit loud. So I'm just going to nudge that down a smidge. That's probably still a bit loud. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just knock that volume down. Just to give the noise gate a fighting chance. And I will just increase that noise gate threshold a touch. Probably not enough, but... No, it isn't. Nudge that down a smidge more. There we go. That's, that's probably a bit more reasonable. I don't know. We'll see when I uh, when I watch this back. Um, so East Mids, what is the current weather? The weather is um, so one zero two zero on the Q and H, which is. Yeah, we're pretty much there anyway. Near has done it. Surface wind zero five zero seven knots. Temperature nine degrees dew point plus five. Yeah, looking out the window, it is pretty chilly given uh, how it's been earlier in the uh, month. Well, last month of it. Uh, no precipitation at the moment. Which is all present and correct looking out the window. So we'll stick the heater thing on. Not that it does anything, and I always liked it on my feet. Keep your feet warm. T's and P's are coming up. So, yeah, a really itchy nose. Um, Stick the landing light on. PT can come on, although it's probably not really required. Uh, and we can stick the prop up. I wish this button would work for your low idle, but alas, it does not. Um, 
ignoring the T's and P's and the engine warm up, let's, uh, it can warm up while we're taxiing. That's absolutely not what you should do, but hey, it's FSX. Be thankful we're not in a hot air balloon. And then we'll taxi along this absolutely not a taxiway. I don't know why it's done that, because um, I should think, oh. Um, I should have thought that, uh, oh, East Mid's Grain's just come on. Oh, crap. Am I going to actually have to do this properly? Uh, right, okay. In that case, uh, I'm going to have to get up the charts. No, I've got charts because I genuinely don't know where I am. I think I'm just shy of Tango from memory. Um, so, uh, bear with me. Una memento, por favor. Uh, I'm going to have to clear that flight down. Manual input. EGNX to EGNX. Uh, that's what the bop 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 was. It was him sending me a um, contact me. So I'm going to open my charts list. I'm going to get my tax skis up. I'm going to pull that up. Is it going to give me a moving map? No, it's not. Uh, not Tango, Mike, sorry. Yes. So if I look at top down, yeah, we're shy of Mike. Uh, Hang on, are we? We'll look at that. We've got that one there. Yeah, we're shy of Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, we are actually. But Mike, let me show you this. It's quite interesting. Um, I say quite interesting. It's not as dull as hell, but I'm going to show you anyway. There we go. Um, so we're actually at a hold here. We're at Mike Alpha there. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. Um, but clearly it's not a, uh, a thingamabob. Um, right, so let me pull up a V Pilot. Uh, oh, yeah, 1219. Oh, now is Air come on? So if Air's come on, I'm going off. No, he's not. Uh, one, two, one, nine. Uh. East Midlands Ground, good evening. Golf Mike Lima, Tango November, radio check. I did not get a word on that. Uh, Golf Tango November. Um, I saw the RX light light up in V Pilot, but I heard nothing. Let me just check; it's not my end. Uh, so sound is on full chat. It's on the speakers. That's all fine. Uh, let me open the volume mixer just to make sure Windows hasn't done its thing. Uh, no, that should all be working in Windows. Uh, ground is going to disconnect and reconnect. Got my uh, Lima Tang November East Midlands Ground. Ah, East Midlands Ground. Hello, readability five. Uh, likewise, um, Linda, thank you for the Brilliant. Um, so we are VFR in a Grob 115, uh, looking for VFR circuits, please. Golf, Tango November. Roger, Golf, Michael, Lima, Tango November, start approved. Uh, call me ready for taxi. One step ahead of you, we're at uh, Mike Alpha now, um, so ready for taxi, engine running. Roger, go for Mike Lima. Uh, in that case, text it to you. Can you take Mike 1, I'm guessing? Hey, firm, yeah, not a problem. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, text it to holding point Mike 1. Uh, report checks complete. 
Roger, Mike one via Mike, and uh, we'll report checks complete. Uh, Golf Tango November. Uh, fantastic. Um, ground, the, the job of ground for VFR when there isn't an air controller on is um, an absolute doddle. Um, there is absolutely nothing you need to do, um, realistically speaking. So very, very, very easy indeed. Um, when there's an air controller on, um, it becomes a, a ball ache because um, ground actually gives you clearance normally. Sometimes it's given at the hold. That's normally the better way of doing it uh, by the air controller because if, if they give you clearance at, um, at parking, of course, the air controller is the only one who can actually do that. And uh, uh, he said mic one, didn't he? Yeah, that was mic two. This is mic one. Uh, and we'll just turn into the wind here. There we go. Um, and they, they have to relay the clearance from air to ground and then ground to, to the pilot. And it's it's just a monumental pain in the butt, um, having done it myself. So, um, yeah, ground is just going to hand me off to Unicom any, um, you know, when I call up ready to rock and ruin. So that makes his job very, very easy indeed, uh, which is good. And then we won't hear from him again until um, we're back on the ground and vacated the runway. His uh, authority ends at this line here. Um, and then you become airside. Um, we'll stick on the GPS just for uh, tips and pickles. Not that we need it. So we are going to uh, air mode. So that's mode Charlie, I would imagine. I don't know if. I assume the grob has moved, Charlie. But anyway, um, since I've got Navigraph up, we may as well stick in the NDBs. So three nine a three. This doesn't have an ADF, does it? I've fallen down this trap before. No, we don't have an ADF, so we're not going to do that. Uh, so we will therefore have to key in the ILS because there's no VOR here at uh, East Mids. Uh, so 10935. So 10935. Oops, and we'll do the flipper of flopper. Um, and then we'll use this VOR here. And the course is 089er. Uh, let's key it into the right thing, that would be good. 089er is there or thereabouts, near as damn it. Um, and yeah, the bug is irrelevant in the whole thing. Uh, so we will do our run up checks, which is something like that. Let's make sure we're not creeping forward because the brakes on this suck. There we go. I just feather the prop more or less. <clears throat> uh, and we are looking for a bit, a bit richer than that. Sorry. Hang on, let me do this properly, shall we? It's weird because we've got a the the brakes aren't good enough. Um, real world, you can go full throttle with the brakes on, and you you ain't budging. Um, I'm just trying to get my mixture sorted. Yeah, and it's it's going to be all hawky borky because of the. Um... Four stations, four stations. Unfortunately, East Midlands is going to come to close. Uh, Mike Lima, Tang November, do you want to just provide your handoff? Yeah, go for it. We're pretty much uh, ready to go, mate. Uh, Golf Tango November. Uh, lovely stuff. Fortunately, I don't control the runway, but I can't see anyone on the final. Uh, so take up at your discretion, uh, QNH1014. Uh, Roger, take off at uh, my discretion, 1014. And thank you very much, uh, Golf Tango November. Cheers, bye. Uh, no problem, enjoy. Uh, so, right, he's gone then, so we're back to Unicom then. Uh, no one on approach, so that's good. So we've got some lights on. We'll stick the strobe on. Uh, flaps are set. Prop can go to high, although it won't be on high for very long. Um, 
and yeah, I'm winging it. T's and P's, temperatures and pressures. For those of you who don't speak, uh, the pressure will come up. At the moment, it's, it's in the orange, um, but it will come up. Main thing, fuel pressure and temperatures and everything are, are good. Uh, and the battery is charging, which is nice. So, quick look-see over there. Beautiful thing about the grub. Visibility is fan-dabby-dozy. Um, yeah, lovely. Right, so away we go. What time are we on? 10 to 6. Okay, cool. I have a wee bit of time. Um, let me just pull up my flea mails, actually, because the boss wants a chat. Okay, cool. Alrighty then. So, that's good enough for me. We'll go full power. You'll see our prop RPM has just gone through the roof, so we'll pull that back into the green. 2500s probably all right uh, and then our mixture of fuel flow we can um, knock that right back um, since we have the variable pitch prop and uh, yeah that was a rather quick takeoff I wasn't quite expecting to accelerate that quick what the hell am I on two times speed no I'm not oh I didn't do my trim oh, I knew I forgot something um, and Oh, we're going. We're on zero nine, of course, aren't we? Why did he say Q's one zero one four? Well, anyway, whatever. We'll go to that since that's what he said. Um, there's the M one. Yes, of course, we are on uh, easterly departures, so that's a smidge unusual. Three smids. Normally, well, most of the UK, normally you're on uh, westerly departures because of the prevailing wind coming from the Atlantic. Well, I've not checked to see whether the joystick cam's working yet. So let's have a, have a quick look, see. Joystick cam, do your worst. No. Nope. Apologies, it ain't gonna work. Around about 1200, 1300 feet uh, for a circuit at East Mids. And we can bring our mixture rider back. And we can bring our throttle back as well. We don't need all of that throttles. Uh, flaps can go away now. Did they come up? Yes, they did. Uh, we'll leave the lights on and stuff so you see how lean the um, mixture is. You can get away with that. In fact, it's probably a smidge too lean. Oh, yeah, I'll stick it around about 30. Uh, so, yeah, burns more air, less fuel, loosely speaking. Um, so, yeah. Better endurance, less wear on the engine. Go too lean, engine starts running really, really hot, um, which of course is a problem, uh, which is why you also keep an eye on the T's and P's, temperatures and pressures. And you can see our pressures come up now. Uh, now we've got a bit of uh, static pressure generated by the prop pushing uh, the air into engine. Oh, we're still in the uh, wrong view there. Let's go to that one. Yeah, we're in the Tayside Aviation colour scheme, although this is not the paint scheme I saw when I did my flying scholarship at Tayside. Um, maybe that's new or old, I don't know, but they definitely didn't have that colour scheme. Um, so throttle can come back then. Keep the nose up. Don't start a descent yet. Because we need the speed to come back so we can drop a stage of flaps. And now we're, we're well in the zone for the flap now. And we'll take full landing flap. Electronically actuated flaps, no hydraulics on this beast. I use the term beast quite loosely. And then we retrim the aircraft for uh, landing. Jesus, this is a terrible, terrible circuit. I am, yeah. 
Oh god, and I've turned too early as well. Right, I'll just round that off a little bit. And we're looking for around about 70 knots on uh, on final. In this FSX version, at least, anyway. Um, yeah, and slightly different numbers in real world, but not, not miles off, actually. So the throttle's back quite nicely now. Not fully at zero, but might as well just bring it back to zero. We've got plenty of plenty of speed. There we go, seventy knots. Puppy lights. You might be familiar with the um, precision approach pilot something. Can't remember what it's called. Um, completely irrelevant for flying an aircraft like this. Three degree glide slope is just yeah. We don't care. Um, Realistically, I know when I when I was flying these, um, your approach should be something like that. That would be your angle of attack coming in for approach. So just hold the nose, hold the nose above the horizon. One twenty five. Take that, and our flaps go up to take off. Our trim goes into take off range. Which is a lot easier to do when you've got peripheral vision. Hey, hey, hey. Because I could do that. Trim set. That's a lot quicker to do in real life. Throttle can come back up there. And then just keep an eye on the mixture. And for this, uh, the 115E, so the Grub Tutor, as opposed to the Grub Heron, uh, you've just got to keep an eye on your prop RPM as well. The only difference between the two. Um, the tutor has a variable pitch prop, the heron does not. Which is why air cadets can fly it solo. By the, the fixed pitch prop. I don't know if that holds true actually for normal PPL stuff, whether you can fly variable pitch prop for your solo free ppl i don't think you can but i'm, I'm not sure um our speed is actually really really good so we can uh, we can chin off the flaps oh, yeah lovely this thing goes up like an absolute rocket considering it's only a four cylinder lawnmower engine in the front of this thing I'm being flippant, it's not quite that bad, but it's, you know, it's not not an amazing bit engine in this. doesn't need to be. Yeah, the adverse yaw on this thing is um, huge in this FSX model. It, it's not like that in, the, in real life. I'll, um, I'll tell you what adverse yaw is. So... Adverse yaw is a weird phenomena. When you roll the aircraft like that, the aircraft also yaws. And that is your yaw... Oh, crikey, that's hard to show. Is where you change the, the direction that the nose is pointing, even though you're still flying in a straight line. So that's your yaw, and that's your roll. Or bank if you're American. Now, when you roll left, say, for example, you'll see this aileron goes down. Yeah. Bring back level. So if we go left, that aileron goes down. So this generates more lift. Conversely, if we look on the uh, on the port aileron, that aileron goes up. Okay. Do that again. That aileron goes up, so it generates less lift. One of the byproducts of generating lift is drag. And the more lift you generate, the more drag, parasitic drag, you generate. Um, just as a consequence. Okay. So if we're now generating more lift on this wing and left on uh, less on this wing, therefore we've got more drag on this wing and less drag on this wing. So that basically, because there's more drag, it's pulling it back. Like that. It's pulling it back towards us. 
and the other wing you can think of it as pushing that wing forwards so just by rolling we actually cause the aircraft to yaw so if we do a left turn the nose will tend to yaw to the right because that right wing is being pulled back towards us because it's got more drag on it now we see that in the aircraft it's much easier to feel but we've got this little spirit level okay and if i roll to the left of course it's not going to do it when I'm wanting to do it because I get a huge lag spike. If we roll to the left. What? I was doing it a minute ago. You stupid aircraft. No, it's not going to do it anyway. But effectively it pushes the nose out to the right. So you balance. Oh, of course, yeah, it goes to the left. No, I'm being a turbo mong. Um so as we roll to the left, the ball goes, no, that's wrong. The ball goes the other way. It's, it's chatting nonsense. It was doing it a minute ago because it was driving me nuts. Um, so you, you basically, you, you have to put in a bit of left rudder when you're rolling left, just for when the ailerons are, 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 are set. Once, once you've actually completed the roll, then you just need a bit of aileron on, uh, sorry, a bit of rudder on just to balance the aircraft because you're on the cock. But you need a little bit more when you initially do the turn um, just to come, uh, overcome that adverse yaw. Now there is a thing called adverse roll as well, um, which is a little bit easier to see. So we'll do that on the next circuit. I'm not going to bother with flat. We'll do a, do a flatless landing here. Not at that speed we won't. Let's bring the speed back. There we go. That's far too fast anyway. This might just end up being a low pass. Will be. So going around. Keep the nose down because the runway is clear. Build up the speed. In fact, we've got tons of speed anyway. And up comes the nose. And we'll climb out and we'll trim for climb. So, right, traffic. What traffic have we got? Is that Ryan Scare still there? Nope, the Ryan Scare has vanished. Okay, cool. So the other thing that we get is adverse roll. So if I yaw the aircraft to the right, you'll see the rudder moves to the right. Like that. Notice how the aircraft rolled. I wasn't touching the stick, and I will prove that to you. So let me just recenter the camera. So no hands. Rudder right. Aircraft rolls to the right. Why? Have a think about that. It's actually really obvious. Really, really obvious. Again, we're thinking about lift. Drag's irrelevant in this one, just thinking about lift. So we'll get the climb out. Since we are on online, I should probably at least vaguely do uh, a proper circuit. Okay. So, let's have a look see at that again. And of course, the camera's rubbish. So, if we go rudder right we roll to the right. Why? Those angles, they're perpendicular, so why is the aircraft rolling when we put a sideways force on it? If you got it, well done. If you think you know it, here's the answer. As we yaw to the right, this right wing goes faster because it's on the outside of the circle. If we go to the left, this wing is going to accelerate round the circle like that quite simply Bernoulli's principle and the uh, the whole principle of lift itself uh, half rho v squared um, SCL so on and so forth but they're constants so v squared because that aircraft that wing is going faster it generates more lift if this wing is generating more lift than this wing then it goes up so the right hand wing, the starboard wing, is going to accelerate round, so it's going faster, and therefore generates more lift. 
and therefore it goes up. Simple as that. That that's adverse roll. That's quite easy to get your head around. A few other interactions. There's a moment angle on the rudder. Blah blah blah. Um, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's not relevant in this this aircraft, at least. Um, but yeah, that's how you can actually get away with just flying on the rudder, because it will roll you. Now, being in the aircraft when you are just using the rudder, that is a surefire way to be sick. Uh, because it feels horrendous it feels really unbalanced and we can see this because this spirit level if all is good and proper that ball is in the middle all right no hands if i turn on the rudder that's flown out to the side as is your stomach if i go left then it's flown out the other way and your stomach's giving it all this and you feel sick very very fast it's quite gut-wrenching being thrown thrown about like that. Uh, which is why we tend to roll the aircraft, put a bit of rudder in to just compensate and then pull back. Keep the ball in the middle as much as we can, just tweaking the rudder. Um, my rudder pedals absolutely need a bit of grease. Um, and if your force is always down, well that's what you're used to because that's the way gravity normally acts is straight down um it, you don't feel sick it's when it starts acting sideways and of course that's what roller coasters do um to give you that that sensation of you know excitement and thrill but if, if you're being thrown around persistently uh it, it upsets your balance in your ears there's fluid in your ears that's effectively a spirit level and it upsets your stomach and that's why people or one of the reasons why people feel um travel sick motion sick it's because of that angle one of the reasons that there's more than that but another flapless approach we should get her down this time we're going far too fast you would absolutely have bought this but let's give it a go we should get wheels down before the end of the runway probably midfield oh a huge lag spike which means i lobbed it into the ground the 178 is perfectly reasonable. Bit hard in this, but it's, re it's really hard landing um, a light aircraft like this in FSX because you don't have that feeling and that instant and the, the peripheral vision and all the rest of it. Um, much easier landing softly in real life, but in a light aircraft. Despite the fact that last time I flew, I, <laughs> it was it was many years after I first flew, and I, I took some cadets um, flying. I I wasn't the pilot, obviously, uh, but we took them over to Cranwell, and um, they they flew, and you know I was just their chaperone, you know, person responsible, and all that sort of jazz. And uh, yeah, of course the 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 instructors there said, look, you know, your staff here, you're giving your day up. Do you want to fly? I went, I, I would absolutely love one, as long as the cadets have all been, and, you know, that's the important thing. That's what we're here for. Um, but, you know, if you've, if you've got a few uh, few gallons of Avgas fuel um, <laughs> spare and, a, and a, an airframe, that would be ace. And they went, yeah, okay, have you flown before? So out comes my pool is log book, because I had it just in case. You're, you, you'll know if you know, you know. Uh, and gave it to them. They were like, oh, okay, cool, right, you have flown before then. Like, yeah, yeah, I did my pilot scholarship and solo and all the rest of it. And they went, oh, okay, cool. And that was that. So, you know, get some coveralls on, get a get a parachute on and all that sort of thing. And um, they said, right, out, out you come then, site. So he walks me out to the aircraft. I get strapped in and, you know, I do not a lot more. Of course, I'm in the left seat, being the student. Um, and out comes this bloke, straps himself in, plugs himself into the microphone and everything so you can hear him through the helmet. He says, hello, Simon, I'm group captain, such and such. I'm like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. Uh, chief flying instructor for the, for Cranwell. I was like, for, I was like, okay, brilliant. I've got the CFI. Holy crap. Um, and he says, yep, so senior, senior logbook. Um, keys are in. We need to be back in about half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, crack on. <laughs> I was like, uh, 
Well, thank you very much, sir. Um, I've not flown in about 12 years. Would you mind just getting me a thousand feet up in the air? And then, you know, I'll kick the pedals and pull the stick a bit and just get, get my bearings and sort of um, refresh the memory on how it all works. And he sighed. He was like, oh, fine. Okay, cool. Not a problem. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, we taxi out onto the runway. I can't remember which runway it was at Cromwell, but... And, uh, Literally, the wheels hadn't even left the ground. We were just on the squishy bit of the tyres depressing. And he goes, you have control. Of course, I'm there looking out the window going, yeah, I remember this. This is, oh my God, okay. <laughs> he yanked the stick back. Anyway, get us up there. And literally, it's like riding a bike. You don't, you just don't forget because you're not, you're not trying. It's just natural. You know, you pull the stick here, you do that, and you, your feet move at the same time. And you, you just, it was like the last time I flew was 10 minutes prior. Um, so all over it, really, really good fun. And uh, he says, what do you want to do? Do you want to do some aero, aerobatics and, you know, all that sort of thing? I went, no, no, you know, I got bored of that. Like boy racer when you first get your first car and all that. It's like, nah, nah, I'm, bored. I'm not interested in aeros. Can I do some touch and goes? He was like, oh, okay then, fine. Yeah, not a problem. Um, so, <laughs> so I flew this circuit right. Bear in mind, never flown at Camp Cranwell before, so didn't know any of the reference points or, or anything like that. Um, he did the radio for me first time round. Um, I, did, I think I did it after that, actually. Um, but anyway... Did this first circuit, I'll tell you what, you didn't even notice that the wheels had touched the floor. It was that the term butter is banded around far too regularly. Uh, but I mean, it was absolutely buttered the bread. Beautiful landing, gorgeous touchdown, nice placement of the nose wheel down, really, really good. Um, you know, didn't hurt your back because there's only so many touch and goes you can do in an aircraft like this before your back starts hurting. Um, and I, I, I was proud as punch. I mean, this, the grin was from ear to ear. He said, oh, okay, oh, well, that was pretty good. Um, what do you want to do now? I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll do a couple more. I'd like to do a couple more. Um, you know, beginner's luck and all that sort of thing. Oh, okay, fine. So he was clearly bored shitless, but whatever he, he was the passenger really um in his mind not in my mind <laughs> but in his mind so anyway <laughs> we come round final for the second approach beautiful approach got it absolutely on rails perfectly trimmed speeds good flaps are good the whole lot much better than i'm doing now obviously uh, and you know pleased as punch and I tell you what, I nearly put the nose wheel through the cowling when we touched down. I absolutely leathered the thing into the floor. And it was like, oh shit, that, that was no good. <laughs> and he laughed and I was like, holy crap, how have I done that? That, that, that was pretty poor. Um, and anyway, I did another one and it was somewhere in between. I couldn't, couldn't do the, the absolute beautiful touchdown I did the first time. Uh, he says, uh, right, what do you want to do now? I said, okay, yeah, fair enough. Point, point taken. Um, you know, too many touch and goes. Um, and he was expecting me to say aerobatics. He says, oh, can, can I do a bit of cross country? Uh, he went, oh, okay, yeah, fine. So we, we did a bit of cross country. See, that was heavy. Um, did a bit of cross country, bit of nav, flying around, hand railing stuff. And, you know, that sort of thing that I find quite quite nice and peaceful and chill out and he says right we're doing some aerobatics now I was like, oh, okay fine if we must and he says right do a stall turn so of course i've not flown for ages and let's get a bit of height actually i'll show you exactly what i did uh trim for climber i'm gonna need a bit of height to do this uh, let me just check V pilot now. Yeah, we're all good. Uh, that spy, how are we diddling? Yeah, we're the only one at Ace Meds, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to need a lot more height. And we really shouldn't do this in the circuit, but I'm going to. Uh, in fact, I'm going to check. 
Yeah, no, we're fine. We haven't got any control on. That's fine. Uh, this is going to be a sketchy recovery. I'll tell you that now. Uh, there's a very good chance we're going to hit the deck here. So we'll tell you what we'll do on downwind because then I should have a bit more altitude. Normally you'd be at least 6,000 feet doing arrows. Um, I'm going to be doing this at 2,000 if we're lucky. So I also, well, back then I, I was flying model aircraft quite regularly, so it was sort of part of my job, um, loosely. Um, and the way you fly a model aircraft is very, very different. The, the, if you're interested, the Reynolds numbers are completely different, so all the forces and the equations are the same, um, but some of the assumptions you make and the, the numbers involved are very, very different indeed. EGNR? Where the hell's EGNR? Yeah, wherever the hell that is. I'm intrigued. Oh, it's Harden. Oh, of course it is, yeah. So, what are we at? 2000 two ish. So, stall turn, build up a bit of speed, you pull up. Oh, Christ. Build up a bit more speed than that. So, dived. Got the speed up just above 120. Up comes the nose, looking at the wingtip. Kill the throttle. Wait for the speed to die off. Boot the rudder. Now, I got as far as killing the throttle. And this CFI, this groupie, who was, uh, you know, basically just sat there not doing anything, suddenly sprung into life and was like, Oh, what are you doing? Boots full throttle. And it was like, I have control, blah, 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 and does the recovery and everything, gets the speed back up. He says, what, what were you doing? What were you doing? I was like, stall turn? He was like, why did you kill the throttle? I was like, shit, we're in a full-size aircraft, aren't we? Crap. Because if you go vertical in a most model aircraft, you'll continue going vertical. Right, because it's the thrust to weight ratio, the engines are so powerful and the aircraft so light. You do that in a powered aircraft where your thrust to weight ratio sucks, all of a sudden your prop wash, so the airspeed over your rudder is zero because you you've stalled and your prop's not really spinning, so there's no air being blown over it. You don't turn because you don't have that prop wash over the thing, because the Reynolds numbers are so different, and you don't do that, you do a tail slide, and you start flying backwards. That's a distinctly bad situation to be in when you're sat in the thing. Model aircraft, not so much a problem, although it doesn't really happen in model aircraft, because at idle, the engines produces enough thrust, that, or enough prop wash, that the rudder still remains effective. And the inertia of the aircraft is, is reasonably low because it doesn't weigh anything. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I, I forgot you leave the power on. And I said, OK, right, fine. Let, can, can I do that again? And now I've, you know, the, the cobwebs are, are blown off. And he went, yeah, mm, oh, oh, OK. Well, he showed me how to do one first. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And did it. And it, you know, is it? It was a reasonable stall turn. It didn't come out on the nose where, where you should do. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a disaster. And then we did a, a corkscrew. We did a barrel roll, uh, a loop. Stuff that, you know, the cadets love it because more often than not, it's the first time they've done it. But once you've done so many of them, you're like, you know what, I'm not really bothered. Um, I've, I've had my fun. Um, before so I'd rather focus on the technicalities and of course at this point I then also had an aeronautical engineering degree so I, I was really interested in some of the uh, secondary flight dynamics things like the fugoid and the, and the uh, spiral mode and stuff like that um, that was a very long base leg so we'll uh, What's our altitude? And we're quite high as well, so we'll get get down to a sensible altitude, and then this will be our full stop. Screen, come on, no. 
yeah, so that that's a sort of fun, exciting story. And then um, I think the CFI did the landing, actually, the final landing. I was a bit annoyed about it because I wanted to do it. I, I say annoyed. That's unfair, you know. That I was there in that aircraft because, you know, they offered. So I'm not, not annoyed. That's the wrong word. But... Um, you sort of want to do everything when you got a taste for it. You're like, oh, I want to do all the things. I want to do all the things. It's so much fun. So we'll dump landing flat. I'll show you a more typical approach. Now, chances are I won't be able to sustain this because the flight dynamics in FSX on this model are quite different. Um, but we're around about 700 feet, which is pretty much where I want to be for around about here. As you can see, very high, around about 60 knots, which is what I want. Um, trim should be really high. In fact, if we look down at the wheel, no, it's not. It's not ridiculous. Um, around about here, we then go into what looks like lawn dart mode, and it's about that you're looking for. Horizon just about above mid screen. Now this is descending very quick, it, that doesn't happen. Um, and then round out and you just hold the nose just above the horizon, just above, just above, hold it there, hold it there, more and more back pressure. In real life you, you're progressively pulling back really far onto the stick until it's you know rammed up against your nuts. Uh, on this it only, the increments are tiny, you only add a little bit in. Um, so as I say, flight model's not perfect on this, but nor would I expect it to be. And um, we can very, very easily get off at Mike, which is uh, where we departed from. Tell you what, should we go and park up where we uh, where we came? So we'll uh, reduce our prop. We'll sort our mixture out for taxi. We'll take off the strobe light. Transponder can go to ground. And the brakes are a lot more bitey as well on the um, real aircraft. This they're a bit sort of spongy and soft in this. And it, it's not too uncommon actually to be taxiing down something like this. You you there would be a lot more width than that. Um, but this isn't you know a ridiculous ass to be taxiing across grass or you know nonsense like this. Lots more you would do when you run up checks, you check your magnetos and, you know. Can he be bothered with all of that? Uh, strobes can come off, skiz. And then you boot the throttle, smack one of the brakes on, and that spins you around like that. Lovely, 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 lovely. Um, and we will kill the mixture. And that's us down on the ground. Oh, that's a two-bladed prop. Huh? That's your variable pitch prop, by the way. That's the blue lever. Oh, didn't realise that. So there we are. That's me just monging about a little bit because um, I had a bit of free time. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra!